Good morning, Joomla World Conference. Glad to welcome you back. Thank you for that resounding drum roll. Did you know that we had a live band here on stage? For all of you out there in virtual land, you have no idea the entertainment that is going on here. And part of that entertain entertainment is that we have the local communities panel. Did you know there is a local communities department within Joomla? How many knew that? Raise your hands. How many, how many of you know who the, the program coordinator is? Raise your hands. Who is it? You got me, who is it? <laughs> My roommate, Ken Crowder, made it possible for me to have some fun with this because he said in the charter of the transition team that of all the challenges they had to solve for how we're going to run Joomla, there was one department they did not have to do, that it was written into the plan that it was the board's responsibility to, to create the local communities department. And so the board has, of course, so many challenges in its first new year that this did not make number one on their priority list. So this is, in essence, how we're starting to kick off that activity. So this is our opportunity. I would like to start with the panel and having them introduce themselves as we go down the line. We're going to start right here. Tell us a little your name, where you're coming from, and in two breaths, what your business is, how you use Joomla in your day-to-day -day life, and then in three breaths, you get to talk about how you are involved with the community that is around you and what that community looks like, whether it's a translation team or it's a, a regional Joomla uh, organizing event or a jug or something like that. So let's start here. Okay, my name is uh, David Aswani, and uh, I am uh, from Kenya. Uh, I stay in Nairobi. I am, uh, I am working in the Joomla event team as a team member, uh, together with uh, Carlos and David, my, <laughs> my namesake. And, uh, and I am a web designer and developer. And uh, <clears throat> how I am working with my community, I am a JAG organizer for Nairobi. I am a, a Joomla Day organizer for Nairobi. And I'm also organizing an event that Joomla supports called CMS Africa Summit, which is uh, every year in different uh, countries in Africa. Uh, my name is David Tu. Um, I'm from uh, Germany. Uh, I'm uh, an assistant board member thing kind of type uh, in the uh, German Joomla Community Association, uh, Gent Beyond. Um, I'm the core organizer of the German Joomla Day, um, Joomla Camp Germany, running my own local user group in Cologne, so tons of stuff uh, in my local community. Um, and uh, yeah, that's why I'm here, I think. Okay, I'm Carlos Camara, I'm from Spain, and I am events team leader in Joomla, and I try to support also Spanish local community with all the Joomla days they organize during the year. I'm pushing them a bit to organize much more, much many more. And also I am trying to set up a, a Joomla user group in my local community, which is Almeria, uh, working to spread the word of Joomla. Hi, I'm Marco Mangione. Uh, I come from Italy, from Turin, in the north of Italy. Uh, I support the Italian community since uh, 10, uh, 10 years uh, with uh, my, um, my company uh, and hosting service provider uh, specific for, for Joomla. And since last uh, year, I, um, uh, I own and manage uh, Joomla.it uh, website. Uh, where we have uh, 10,000 users per day uh, that um, um, write on, on the forum and uh, so our uh, uh, video, video, gu video guide and, and help the, the, the local community to uh, disseminate the, the, the Joomla, the world and in all the Italian uh, city. Thank you. Hello, I'm Simon from France, so I'm the leader of the French community. And um, in France, we have an association to, with, to try to organize uh, to all the jug that we have. I think we have some jug in France, but also in Belgium, in Switzerland. 
and uh, we organize a Joomla day every year, and um, that's all. Yeah. Um, like. So uh, my name is uh, Sander Bortje. Uh, I'm from uh, the Netherlands, and I'm uh, chairman of a local Joomla foundation. And that foundation is an umbrella for uh, the local Joomla Day, which we organize yearly uh, for uh, about 13 Joomla user groups in the Netherlands, uh, and also for a local community website uh, where many Dutch people are registered and sharing their knowledge in their own language uh, locally. Uh, so our foundation is, is making sure that that's being supported and we try to promote and support Joomla uh, as much as possible in the Netherlands. And back to the far end. My name is uh, Stefan Weida. I'm a Polish Cent Joomla Foundation president. I'm a, a Joomla accessibility team, uh, sub team uh, testing aud and auditing leader. Uh, Joomla is my way, my life, and my wife. <laughs> <laughs> I am not speaking English. <laughs> <laughs> so, among the challenges that you have as local group organizers, let's first look at jugs and jug events. Who's got a um, successful jug event story to share? Something that uh, was an event that you pulled off, and why was it very successful? Sandra, you start. Okay. okay. So, um, back in 2000, Eight, I guess. Uh, in the Netherlands, we had uh, we have many Joomla users, uh, and by that time, there were some user groups around the world, um, and people were interested in sharing their Joomla knowledge with each other in, in user groups in the Netherlands as well. Um, but of course, one has to start with it. It doesn't happen by itself. So uh, we started with uh, on our local community website having a forum where people could share their interest in uh, joining a Joomla user group. And I think over 200 people did. And then we uh, kind of checked, checked them on the map where a user group will be uh, a good uh, solution for, for that area where uh, at least 15 users will be able to attend that meeting. Uh, and we ended up to start with directly, I think at that time, seven user groups um, because there was so much interest. And then we reached out to a couple of people in that area. Hey, we know you live in that city. Uh, we do have uh, about 15, 20 people that are interested in user group. Uh, are you willing to organize it? And organize is not that hard. We can uh, uh, help you with some suggestions. But uh, one of the most important thing is to have a space where you can meet up. Uh, and then starting to have a regular meeting. And that's what, what's one of our main uh, recommendations by having a, a, a structured uh, monthly or bi-monthly uh, meeting of your user group that helps people to get uh, into the flow of attending a user group. Uh, and also, uh, if somebody is missing a user group, they can directly check on the agenda what's the next meeting will be and put it in their own agenda. Uh, so in that way, the, the user groups quickly grow, and we're now with 13 user groups in the Netherlands, and I think uh, at least 10 of them have monthly meetings, so uh, they're also, are, the Netherlands is not that big, so from my home with an hour drive, I could probably attend 12 of them. Uh, so we have a lot of user group, users that are also visiting multiple user groups uh, a month uh, within their distance. But the, my, the, the main point is to, to, to I think, uh, first collect where people are interested and then find somebody who's willing to do it. And then uh, even when the, meet, the first meeting has only like two, three, or four people, keep pushing uh, and don't give up directly, but try to uh, get more and more people uh, by promoting it on all ways of possibilities you possibly have. So that's, that's how we started our user groups in the Netherlands, at least. Not sure how other countries started it. But. I'm trying to, to push the, the Yula user group in my local community and it's been very hard <laughs> because the first meetings are not having more than two or three attendees. So maybe it's the structure of the of the uh, jug because we, we program them in meetup.com, okay? And we propose a, a topic for the 
for the session where I usually prepare some slides about, I don't know, how to build a membership site with Joomla or last time was how to develop a Joomla plugin, just trying to get more developers involved in, in the local community. And I got no, no, no such a good uh, response. So I'm thinking, I'm not giving up, obviously. <laughs> But I'm thinking I cannot push it like uh, monthly <laughs> as I want it. So uh, it's interesting to know that your experience, you had some uh, fail, well not fail, but so few people at the beginning and then you started growing. So we are trying to, to push to that. <coughs> it's interesting to see how other communities like uh, the WordPress local community gets much many attendees um, and in Joomla, well, people seems like saying there in Almeria, oh, is people still using Joomla? And you say, why? Well, yes, it's the second most used CMS in the world. So, but yeah, it's it's hard. <laughs> well, I, I think the the uh, the example of the WordPress community. I think what makes huge difference for them is that they display uh, the next meeting date for your local community directly in your WordPress dashboard. Um, they have a little module right when you log in um, where it says, uh, apparently you are from Cologne, Germany. Um, uh, the next meeting in Cologne is five minutes walk away and it's going to be on 4th of April. So no matter if you actually dive into the Joomla community yourself, you'll get it presented right when you're working on your own local site, which kind of makes sense to me. That's actually a nice idea to mm. have that, yeah. yeah. I, I, uh, I suggested it uh, numerous times uh, to different teams, um, but the feedback that I got so far was um, that it wouldn't make sense for the Gymna community because we still have a number of countries where you have little or no user groups at all, and then the next meeting would be 500 kilometers away which kind of makes sense, but there could be a limitation if it's more than 100 kilometers away. Don't show I, anything. I, I, yeah, exactly. Yeah. WordPress yeah. has the same challenge and they just don't show, so. Yeah. yeah. I think for, 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 for me, I would say that uh, the Joomla user group in, uh, in Africa is, uh, is picked up well. It's, uh, it's now five years since we did our first Joomla day in, uh, in Kenya. And then uh, from Nairobi, we went to Kampala. From Kampala, we went to, to Tanzania. From Tanzania, we went to Burundi. From Burundi, now we are in Somaliland. And, 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 uh, and I think the, <coughs> the, the Joomla Day has helped the local community to, 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 to start uh, building something and to thrive. And uh, the, the best story is uh, the Joomla user group in Kampala, which is really vibrant. And, uh, and uh, two years we were doing the, the Joomla, Joomla day in Kampala, and then we transferred the organization to the local community, and they picked up really well. And now they, they are running with it, and, and it's, it's thriving. So. <clears throat> I would say that uh, it's uh, <coughs> we face the same same challenges. I would like I, I speak to Peter, and uh, he said the the Joom, the the Joomla community in uh, in Netherlands is the best <laughs> in the whole world. <laughs> and every time we we are trying to 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 have that uh, kind of community in uh, in Africa and to to make it vibrant and to involve more people. And we are not yet there, but uh, we, 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 we are really doing well. Well, in, in Spain, we have also, we are pushing the Jula days, and we have noticed that whenever we have a successful Jula day, if there is no user group in that uh, city, at least you get a bunch of people interested in creating one Jula user group. Okay, we have some examples like Jula de Granada. Uh, we got also Jula de Madrid. And well, that's an example of a successful Jula day was Jula de Vigo on September. But for instance, in Granada, we, we got interest of creating a, a Juke. And I think that they already created it. Not sure about how they are doing with their monthly meetings. 
But it, a, a really interesting case was Madrid because Yula, Yula, uh, Madrid ha already has a, a UG and Yula user group. But uh, we have some attendees from uh, Canary Islands and they created a UG since the, the Yula in Madrid. They attended the, the event and they got so interested in Yula that they, they created the, the UG in, in Tenerife. So, uh, it's it's interesting to see how Jula days push a bit the community. If you do not have a, a yuk, also Jula day Malaga created the yuk based on the on the Jula day we we celebrate there. So if you do not have a yuk in your community, having a successful Jula day, which you can have, like asking other people in your country who has managed to create a, a successful Jula day. And also, you can contact us as events team. Uh, it's also a good thing to to move in the community a bit because some people like used Joomla when Joomla was Joomla 1.5, and they are not aware about how much we have improved. Mm. And when they go to a Joomla day and say, "Oh, it's multilingual now, <laughs> and now it's easier to create this, and now I can do that," they say, "Okay, I'm going to give it another opportunity." and you get people back into the community. And I, th I think the combination of having user groups and a Joomla day yeah. is a very strong one. What, what we usually see is that uh, after a Joomla day, people, people are at a Joomla day, then we of course present the user groups that are available and then people, oh, there's actually a user group in my, in my own town. Uh, so after a Joomla day, we usually see more people joining uh, the, uh, the user groups, and also works the other way around when, uh, you, for example, user groups, we're asking them to promote the Joomla day. So the user groups can go there with the entire group to a Joomla day. Uh, and we also ask people to, uh, for example, practice their presentation for the Joomla day at user groups. Uh, so that also solves the problem where uh, user groups are having difficulties to find a good topic. We asked the presenters of the Joomla Day, hey, you can practice your presentation for the Joomla Day as your lo local user group. The user group has a presentation, the presenter can practice it, improve it for the Joomla Day. And, and that, so especially that combination between those uh, two aspects of local communities uh, is, I think, very important uh, and helpful to build a, a strong local community in that. Yeah. We have a question. Um, Good morning. My name is Dror. Um, I think it's going to last here a lot because I'm going to ask many, many, many questions. Um, first of all, uh, this is the first time I heard this, uh, this event that uh, there are user, user groups. Um, first of all, how many of the Joomla users at your countries knows that such, such things, user groups, or is exist? And how do they manage to know about it? That's the first question. I'll, yeah. I'll keep on later. So, um, of course, there's the, the international Joomla website where you can present it. But uh, I think quite often local of people from local countries are not visiting Joomla.org that much, but probably local communities, especially when they are available, uh, like a local community site in their own language. Um, and. I'm, I'm not exactly sure if that's still a rule, but in the past it was recommended to have an own website for your user group. We kind of recommended to have, that, that's not that important part. The most helpful for us was to have it on the local community website actually, because then people are aware of it. They are already visiting the local community website and come across the user groups uh, that are in that, that area. Uh, so via your local community, you reach out to those people and of course the Joomla days and, and get them uh, attention. A lot of the user groups think... seem to derive a lot of value from separating out the content and fairly representing different mixes of content in your, in your group presentations. I'd be curious what mix you find successful between, for example, presentations that are aimed more at uh, what I would call a webmaster, a person who's the administrator of a local website that somebody else built for them, compared to, say, an agency site builder who is, their day job is to try to create websites for other people. And then there are people who are working at trying to develop extensions or to sell. And then there are, then there are presentations that are aimed at the business of Joomla and how you find a revenue model and, and stay in business and train or, or sell documentation or whatever it is. 
What's the mix of business versus technical content? What works for you? Um, well, in, in, in Germany, it massively depends on the actual user group that you're talking about. We have some groups uh, which are mainly a bunch of developers sitting together, and those groups are primarily uh, targeting developer-related topics. The downside of this very specific target group is that it's very hard to attract and f especially to keep more low-level users, so to say, because <coughs> if they they probably visit such a user group meeting only once, uh, they understand nothing because they just started with Joomla, and somebody's doing a presentation about plugin development. Um, they have they have no value returned from that meeting, so they never show up again. Um, in many other user groups, um, at least in Germany, it's um, the the attendance. The group of attendees is more low-level, more integrators, more webmasters of the local soccer club. That's the, the primary target group. Um, so that's also where the, the topics are targeted at. Um, and we, this leaves one target group without proper topics, which is the developer-related stuff. Um, and we try to fix this by having some sort of virtual user group. Uh, we, at least last year, um, we did uh, a number of Google Hangouts um, where uh, one guy was the host, mostly me, um, asking a bunch of other people to do a Hangout at a specific date and time um, about a more developer-related topic, share some best practices, maybe do a short presentation, do some live coding. Um, and this was live streamed, so people could ask questions. Um, and uh, Germany isn't that large, but it's still 800 kilometers from north to west, so uh, from north to south, so it wasn't possible for those developers to meet somewhere, so the virtual thing was kind of a workaround for this um, to still allow more target-specific user group meetings. David, you have fewer developers in your area, yeah. but you have a lot more end users. What, what are the most successful programs that your user groups have? I think uh, for us, it's, uh, you have to, 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 to put money in between. Like, uh, if you learn this, then <laughs> this will happen. And, uh, and uh, we work with a lot of students uh, from the universities. And uh, when you are introducing Joomla to them, you have to put in the side of uh, the business. How, how do you make it a business? How do you have a Joomla website that uh, gives you a shop? For example, and you use the shop to to make to make money out of it, and uh, <clears throat> we come from a, a culture whereby if somebody wanted a website, they will go to a developer, and the developer will give them an invoice after X Y Z has been done. But then uh, to enlighten them and to tell them that this is something that you can do. And uh, sometimes when we were doing the Joomla Day in uh, Tanzania, Russia, and we were sitting with the uh, uh, young people and taking them through how to install uh, a Joomla from, from scratch, and uh, you would see the excitement in them. And uh, normally we'll uh, look at our audience and we'll mix our topics so we have the, the basics for people who, are, who know nothing about Joomla. You want them to learn about Joomla, you want them to help themselves using Joomla and you'll have a topic for them, you'll have a topic for, for developers and uh, people who want to interact and ask questions and uh, see how to better Joomla, you'll have a topic for them, and then you'll have a topic for, for, for Joomla for business. And in this case, you'll have people who, who know their way around in Joomla, but then they are using Joomla to, to, for, for, for business. Yeah. Other ideas? Yeah, but what, what, what we usually recommend is to clearly communicate the topic of your user group meeting, and preferably even your target audience of that meeting. It's, it's fine if one meeting is more targeted on site creators and the other one is more on developers, but at least communicate that clearly so people can decide themselves if that meeting is interested for them or not. 
or skip one meeting and join the next one again. Um, that, that solves at least the issue that people are joining the meeting, like David explaining, uh, and get frustrated because or the level is way too high or way too low. Um, and um, for the developers, we, we kind of have a, 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 a Dutch Joomla developers group, what's it's called, uh, which is touring around around the country, which <coughs> is meeting uh, every two months on average, with specifically target for developers. Uh, and uh, we're also making that very clear in the description. Uh, we expect you're building your own extensions uh, so we can raise uh, the level of discussion directly from the beginning. But by having communicated very clearly, that's, that helps a lot. Uh, but in the end, I, I do think that most of the people, at least uh, in the Netherlands, are site creators or, having, or website owners that uh, are using Joomla. Uh, so it's also good to think about the people that are maybe a bit more advanced and how they can share the knowledge uh, better with each other. My sense is that Central Europe has a high density of Joomla developers as well as end users, and so it's, it's easy to pull off segmented programming like that. It's really and I, but, but I, I also think that that's because of uh, local communities with user groups where people sharing their knowledge with each other. So people are starting to get interested in, in development more and more. And that's at least what I, and probably in, in Germany it's the same, but I'm pretty sure without those Joomla days and user groups, we won't uh, have that much developers as we do have now in those countries. Uh, Go ahead. Uh, which time of the day of the day you make the Joomla group uh, meeting? Is it morning time during uh, working hours or just uh, the evening? Yeah, that, that's, that's, that really depends, I think, on, on what is common and what's the travel distance and what people prefer. In, in the Netherlands, it's mostly in the evening, uh, the meetings, uh, but there's one user group doing it on a Saturday morning. Um, but yeah. It depends on the, the specific uh, user groups, which uh, decide which time is uh, better for them, which day, day and time. Yeah, in, in, in the Netherlands, the, the most user groups are in, a, in like a 30 minutes drive from people. So it's easier to do it in the evening and people do have time for that. But if I, I certainly can imagine that there are countries where you have to drive like two hours for a user group. Uh, and then we have to, to have a meeting in the evening where people have to go two hours one direction, two hours back. It's probably not the best solution to have it in the evening, but during the day or during the weekend. Or, but that, that's, that's a difficult one, and I, I think it really depends on your location, how many people are in your area, and what, what works the best for them. And what I do know is that some of the user groups are having like one month on the Monday and the other month on the Tuesday to prevent that if people never can join a meeting on Monday, can join the meeting once uh, in a while. Let's get a quick sense of the audience real fast. First of all, by show of hands, which of you have a user group that is near you and that you attend it? That's how you it. <laughs> uh, what would be your choices? Use the microphone right there. <laughs> we can't hear you otherwise, please. It depends, why do you find the user group? Yeah, yeah, that's it. How do, how, how do you define do you, user groups? What are your choices? What are our choices? So we, have a, we have a Joomla day and we have a Facebook group, but I'm not sure people would come to user group like once a month because of the distance and because of right. okay. other reasons. Yeah. So. Yeah. so, sorry, I was centering the question on the live meetings that, the, that they're talking about versus virtual meetings, and virtual meetings are a different thing. So next, Duke, next on this. Sorry, Duke, I'm going to interfere on your list. Please. <laughs> because as events team leader, we, we check all the events that come to, to Jula. And we have noticed uh, some curious events that I think they are quite interesting. And I would like to know the opinion of people who are having them in their countries, uh, which are Netherlands and Germany specifically and also to know what the people around here think about that. These are the unconference uh, events. Recently in the Netherlands you had Justok. Yep. Not sure if you attended or you know. Okay. And in Germany you have the uh, Joomla Camp. Camp. So what is that? What do you do there? Do you think it gets more people involved or it's just people around the community that goes Give me some impressions about that, please. 
Um, <laughs> you started it. Yeah, um, uh, I'm going to quote uh, Robert Deutz, uh, who's organizing the, uh, the Gen Beyond Conference. Uh, when he speaks about unconference style events, he always says uh, it's a conference uh, if you're too lazy. Uh, you do an unconference if you're too lazy for a proper program. Um, <laughs> <laughs> because the, the whole idea of an unconference style event is uh, you don't do an upfront program guide like style thing. Um, you'll just meet in the morning, um, you'll ask people in the audience what would you like to hear about or what can you talk about. Um, so you'll just collect some topics, have them on the wall on a small piece of paper, um, and then you'll just let people vote, for example, by have some, some, some stickers on it or just drawing some lines on them. Um, and the topics that get the most votes will happen on that day. So you, you'll do the program ad hoc that morning. Um, and that kind of worked for us um, because you're definitely creating a program um, that matches the audience. You'll have no sessions that nobody wants to hear because they get no votes. That's the, the risk when you're doing a normal Joomla day, that you're kind of working around the, your target audience. Um, and the, the nice thing for me as an organizer is it's just way less stuff to organize because you don't need to look for speakers, uh, have the program guide print and all those things. Um, it's a one-day event in Germany. Um, we'll meet somewhere in the western uh, where the, the density of population is a bit higher anyway um, and we're about 80 people um, and I would assume 60 are from the inner circle of the community and 20 people are new people who are just coming for, for this single event. Um, 30 euros um, is the fee for the day and that's it. Yeah, and again, it's also about communicating clearly what you expect from people with those events, because it's not the type of Joomla day where you go to uh, and just join a couple of sessions and listening. No, you're being requested to uh, participate actively in those sessions. And uh, at the, the Dutch uh, Talk event, uh, we really try to uh, motivate people. Uh, well, we started the day in a, in a similar way like David just explained, uh, and ended up with mostly a round table discussions. So we, we didn't facilitate any uh, projectors and things like that, just to try to push people to start the conversation with each other. Uh, and what, what was really nice is, uh, for example, out of those meetings, uh, uh, one of the topics was the marketing, of course, around Joomla. Um, and we started to brainstorm around uh, topics, and now a group is working on a, on a brochure uh, in, in the Netherlands uh, to promote uh, Joomla uh, with uh, a resources a list, a local one with the companies, uh, some discussions about new regulations, about privacy. Uh, so it, it was a very interesting day where uh, not only new things started, which are still being worked on, uh, so it's also help to attract people and do something back again in the end, uh, what we noticed at least from this event. How was music in Justok? Because you were promoted as, the event was promoted as uh, Jula and music. So how was music? Or no music? <laughs> there was music, <laughs> uh, actually already in the early morning. And I think the, the hotel where we are said at a certain point, okay, now stop playing. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> no, it, it, it was it, it Justok indeed with a bit of music and uh, but mainly conversation and, and discussions, but in, in a very yeah, relaxed, comfortable atmosphere and, and try to lower the barriers for people to start sharing things and nothing is wrong, come up with your suggestions and ideas and let's see what we can do with it so, together. Yeah. One of Joomla's great strengths is the multitude of languages that it is available in. And I have the sense that in a lot of the local communities, there is a very high overlap between the people who do the translation work and the people who tend to organize events. Have you ever brought the task of translating to an evening to say, as a local sprint, let's work on a translation of a particular activity? Does that work? Does that help? Or is that not a good idea? Well, I have no experience regarding Jula. <laughs> But I can tell you that in the local uh, WordPress group, they propose to do a translation sprint for the WordPress translation day, and they cancel that. Mm. <laughs> so I'm not sure if that uh, is a reference, but that was not interesting in my local community. 
Any other thoughts? No, I'm, I'm thinking of the, the overlap. There, there is some overlap, but not that much. I don't know. Actually, it's, it's not really that the translation team started with the Joomla days, that there were different groups. But yeah, there is in general, I think, always a, a, a smaller inner circle. It's really active on multiple areas. So translation, user groups, Joomla days, uh, the local foundation. Um, but it, it, it really depends. It's not directly that there's a one-to-one. -one, uh, and we also, in, in, for example, the Joomla Day organization, I know that there are a couple of people that are only participating in the Joomla Day and not doing anything else, uh, which is completely fine because they're still contributing uh, what they like the most. And, and it's good for the, for the local community. So, yeah. Please. Secret? Oh. Uh, one of uh, the ideas uh, that uh, me and Shirat uh, came is uh, to build uh, a crew. After the Joomla day, it was, everybody was very passionate and we decided to build a crew for the translation. We asked all the people that wanted to volunteer to the, to, to, the, to the Joomla team, what would you like to do? And we have uh, three people that uh, would like to go to the translation. And then we uh, uh, re recruit them to the, to the translation group. That's our idea. It was not a question, it was uh, an yeah. essay. <laughs> um, I'm trying to establish the Joomla community in Austria. We started like two years ago. And what, what I um, uh, remembered or what was important for us to get like a newsletter list, so to uh, engage people in, in writing down their emails on every user group meeting. We have one user group only in Vienna, <coughs> but there's about uh, between 10 to 12 people every time, and it's different people. So the community is picking up, and we did two Joomla days. And it was always important for us to get the email addresses because uh, like, you can reach people through social media, but it's more direct if you get their email addresses. So this was important. And what we experienced is people have a lot of questions. They want to get answers. So in each user group, we make like question and answer sessions. They come with their own topics. We have a small part, a shorter presentation, like half an hour. And then we discuss it and we get um, questions from the people and try to answer them directly there in their own projects. So that's also big motivation for them to come. Yeah, that's yep. I think I think that's that's uh, the same thing that we've been doing. We have the database for everybody who has attended uh, uh, the user group and the Joomla Day event since we started four years, five years ago. And uh, <clears throat> you would uh, you would ask them questions. What are the topics uh, you you would be interested in? Would you be interested in a Joomla Day event or a Joomla user group meeting? And uh, would you want to get communication about uh, about about Joomla? And and it makes the the the, the conversation. Sure. Uh, we are down to our last two minutes, so I'm going to ask a last question. Uh, we'll start at this end of the panel and go all the way down. I'm going to ask you for any last thoughts you have, and in particular, there in the reorganization of the Joomla structure, there is the you know, International Communities Department, and part of the thinking of that was to say that local groups would then organize into regions, who would then organize into, say, countries, to create regional representation that actually elect a person to the board. Is that important to you? Is that a lot of, it seems like a lot of work. Do you think it's gonna be valuable and, and helpful to you? Or it's, we already have Jennifer Gress for user groups and we've already got the events team for, for Joomla days and we've already got translation team managers. We have enough. Um, tell me what your thoughts are. Everyone gets to talk. Starting with you, going one by one. <laughs> I understand. You skip, okay. David? I, I, I think uh, every time we think how do we make it better, and, uh, and, uh, and for me, I look at Joomla as something that can be made better and better every time. And uh, I try to, from where I sit, I try to communicate with uh, all the Joomla group organizers uh, in Africa 
and uh, some of them face difficult challenges that they cannot express them to anybody because uh, if there was a Joomla day, for example, uh, Lagos in Nigeria in 2016, and then there is no Joomla day in 2017, uh, nobody wants to know what the problem is. And, uh, and the people, the organizers have problems. Sometimes there is no sponsor, sometimes there is uh, logistical challenges. So I think uh, it, it, it will also help to, to, to have maybe somebody they can speak to for their challenges and stuff. Okay. It, it, uh, it helps to know why we had uh, Joomla Day in uh, 2016 and we have no Joomla Day in 2017, if the user groups are, are, are doing okay and what kind of challenges they are making. Okay. But then you can only do that if you have the, the channel which you can, you can follow. David? Um, I think if, if you have a working local community, that's a universe in itself. Um, and you need to find your way, how it works with your local culture, your local people, um, because it massively depends on the actual people who are there. Uh, so I, I'm not sure if a formal structure actually helps with that. I have my doubts. Um, what I think is important is uh, giving them a voice if they have something to say and giving them resources financially, um, having contact persons, all those things, promotion. That's the important part about the structure. I don't really care, to be honest. Mm. Yep, I think we need to hear local communities, specifically they are a universe, a whole universe, and they are so different between them that we need to hear all of them and and attend their, their needs. One thing that I consider a success is what they have done in, in Deutschland in Deutschland and in Germany and in the Netherlands. The having a, a non profit organization that handles their local resources and um, promotes events. We have something similar in Spain. We have an association created by Isidro. Um, uh, it's, it's awesome because it's like a great umbrella for organizing Jula Days and for handling all the financial structure and to thrive the, the community. So having something in the Jula structure that can uh, contact these uh, organizations and hear these uh, Spanish, or I'm speaking about Spanish, these local leaders and and getting feedback on how is Joomla doing in their country is definitely something that can help. Mm -hmm. I want to give you only a magic word uh, focus. If we focus on creating jugs, uh, we can create them. Uh, let's look at what the competitors are doing and innovate it. Uh, this is what we are doing in Italy. So uh, just this. Uh, I think it can be a good idea because we can share all the the, the things that we would ID um, or what we do in the different jug, and also it can be a good idea to to share the the, the speakers because I think on the the jug there is only two people do all the work in France for everybody, and if we can have some speakers can travel and visit different jug, it can be easier for the guys who organize the event. Yeah, so for the uh, uh, local departments, uh, for the local community department, I think it would be very helpful um, to, to share knowledge and best practices with local communities, uh, help new communities to set up a, a local community. I think we always have to keep in mind that there are many cultural uh, and, and language differences, of course, but we can still try to um, see at least what, that, what I was able to visit quite a lot of local communities around the Netherlands, like Germany, Denmark, and uh, the UK. And what I'm always trying to do also in Joomla days and things like that is try to look around what is working really well, uh, try that back in the Netherlands, or change it according to work culture. Um, and I think that can be uh, in that department as well, like sharing those best practices and while keeping in mind what would work for us. Uh, and, and locally um, having a, a foundation or whatever structure 
is, is also very helpful in general um, uh, and also to prevent any conflicts of people running a business and, and things like that and having it separated as a, as a foundation in that area which supported the Joomla project and uh, it's not just one person. Very good. I think we have one last real quick question and then we'll wrap it up. Uh, I need to speak English. How do you handle the cost of space and the rooms? The eventual light, the yeah. Now, <coughs> that's that's one of the reasons why I recommend to have a local structure. Uh, like organizing a Joomla day will cost a lot of money, uh, and um, like we're organizing a new event, but it, yeah, it, it's a quite big Joomla day, but it quickly turns up in 20,000 euros, all the costs you have around it. Uh, and you don't want to get that relied on one people personally responsible for it. So having a, a, a local structure that take care of that is important uh, to get that stable. Um, and, and I know some other countries, some businesses are supporting it, or even people in private. Uh, which I never would recommend because if the if the the, the uh, event is a uh, failure, uh, people get yeah issues, financial issues themselves personally. You don't want that. Uh, but at the other hand, if it's a success and you have some money left, it's good to have a proper structure in that. And that's what we did. We we have like a reserve for when an event will fail. We do still have some uh, money on our bank account, which we can use for saving that. And, and that's all when you have a legal organization that are much easier to, to handle that. Also, yeah, the other thing is you can, uh, like what you do in, uh, in Nairobi and in, uh, in uh, Kampala is uh, we are incubated. The, the, there is an incubator that can hold, host you and uh, you can be there, you can request for two hours in a month and uh, they give you two hours in a month. They organize uh, maybe chairs and, uh, and Wi-Fi and, and everything that you need, yeah. All right. Well, thank you for your participation. Uh, we can do remaining questions after this is over, but for now, we're going to wrap it up. Please show your appreciation to the panel. Thank you. Thank you.